Hi, and welcome back to the channel. Now today I'm talking about another one of the, uh, frankly, excellent Analog Productions Ultra Tapes. This one, as you can see here, the Oscar Peterson Trio, We Get Requests. Now, for those of you who don't know this album, um, it's, it, it's, it's, it's an absolute jazz classic, frankly. And um, it's one I've been into since my early 20s, frankly, uh, when it, which is about when I first got into jazz. And it is exceptionally um, accessible, really, really easily digestible jazz. Oscar Peterson had this um, innate talent of, of, of making... Um, making music that, that, whilst sort of complex and, and fast and, um, you know, the arrangements were, com were, were sort of intricate and, and um, just, just damn good. But they, they, never became, they never became ugly or difficult to listen to or difficult to follow. It was just, he, he made, made extremely palatable music. And I, I don't mean that, that in any way that that was bland and um, unfulfilling. Amazing music. And uh, he was, I mean, his bass player, Ray Brown, who we can see here, um, is, is just an absolute master. And um, the bass is really noteworthy on this album. And then completing the trio, we've got Ed Thigben on drums. And the drums in this are, are, are quite sort of soft, shuffly, sort of... Um, it's just really, really, really easy, easy, easy listening. Now, uh, We Get Requests was recorded in October and November 64. Um, and I'm not entirely certain whether it actually hit the streets in 64 and 65. Most sort of documented references say that it was released in 64, but... Uh, in mind, it was, you know, it was still being recorded in November. That, that seems quite a fast turnaround to me. But anyway, 64, 65 release. Uh, it was recorded at the RCA Studios in New York City. And uh, as was the practice at the time, uh, it's pretty much the state of the art at the time. It was recorded to three track tape. And... Um, I say I think this this was the last recording on Verve for Oscar Peterson, and Verve. Uh, I'm sure again, for most of it, all of you will know of Verve. Um, it was a, a label started by Norman Grants, who previously started the label Clef. Uh, prior to that, he was working at Mercury, and following Verve, he he started Pablo and, and Pablo Records. And the reason I mention that is um, it, 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 it's kind of interesting, the, the history of these labels, but Verve is definitely seems to be quite collectible. And um, Clef Records are possibly even more so. They'll command quite high prices. Pablo's you'll find for, you know, giveaway prices. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever paid more than £10 for a Pablo LP. And um, if there's one thing that you can kind of say about these records is they, they Norman Grants really, really knew how to capture a, um, a live feel. Uh, and and his, his records are just, they're just fantastic. I mean, I, I absolutely, absolutely um, believe that with a vengeance. And ironically, this this recording he didn't produce he he which is you know he he produced most uh, or recorded produced most of the records on um, on his labels but this was jim jim davis i don't think it's the mofi jim davis but um jim davis nevertheless recorded this and did a a sterling job now to get on to um, this particular tape. So, a year or two ago, Analog Productions were um, in the process of making a vinyl reissue of this album. And uh, as is what they attempt to do, which is highly commendable, they acquired the original tapes. 
Now the original master tape for this album uh, would, would be a, a two track tape, obviously a stereo tape. Um, and I presume, but I don't know for definite that that would be a 15 inch per second quarter inch tape. Anyway, Analog Productions um, managed to acquire the tape, uh, but sadly it was faulty. So what they did was they went back to that original three track session tape that I mentioned, the, the actual initial recording. Um, and using that, uh, in fact, it was George Marino at Sterling Sound, who was a, a seriously highly regarded uh, mastering engineer. He mixed that original three track session tape down to create a brand new 30 inch per second, half inch, two track master tape. So because he's using, you know, the latest equipment and he went back to the same source that the original master would have used. Uh, and he made his new master at 30 IPS and half inch, which definitely wasn't what the original was. Uh, I think we could we can safely say that that new master created by um, Marino at Sterling Sound is the best master of this album ever made. Uh, it kind of becomes the new de facto standard, the, the, the new state of the art of this recording. And, um, and, and frankly, I don't think that could be bettered. Uh, I mean, if you, if you, if he went back to the, to the original session tapes and made a 30 IPS one inch master, you know, maybe it could, but it, it's, it's as good as realistically can be got. So what then happens is, uh, analog productions, uh, at Blue Heaven Studios, I think it is. Yeah. Blue Heaven Studios, which is analog productions. Um, own recording studio and tape um, master, well, tape uh, duplication suite. They take that 30 IPS half inch master and they play that back uh, on, or obviously on a 30 IPS half inch machine and they record it to a bank of six uh, Ampex ATR 102s, all absolutely tuned up and, and restored to to absolute state of the art condition, and they're fitted with with the latest state of the art flux magnetics heads. Um, basically, it doesn't get better than that. So, in terms of what you're getting, um, you're buying something that is as close to that actual original recording as you could realistically get. So you've got original recording going to that three track, half inch, 15 IPS session tape. Then that is used to mix, is mixed down to uh, a new two track master by George Marino at Sterling Sound. And then that is directly copied, one-to-one -one copy uh, at Blue Heaven Studios by Analog Productions to this um, 15 inch per second, quarter inch um, master copy. So it's, it's literally, it's two generations off, first generation, second, yes, yeah, two generations off the actual recording tape, one generation off a master. Uh, and that's not off a copy master. That's one generation off a master. So it's 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 as good as you can realistically get. Now there's a if I I just put a link up here. There's there's as is typical with acoustic sounds analog productions. Um, there's a video up here <clears throat> where uh, Chad Kasem explains the whole the whole the whole uh, production process and and uh, sourcing of the tapes for this album and I'd highly recommend you give it a look. Now, what do you get for your money? Let me show you. First of all, a really lovely solid library case box and on the back you can see we've got the original um, rear cover notes with the addition of, you know, mastered by George Marino at Sterling Sound, tape transferred real time on Ampex ATR 102 at Blue Heaven Studios. 
Um, blah, 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 blah. For records and more productions. I mean, really nice thing. And then here, in the uh, inside the slip case, let's take this out. Nice solid box again. So we've got. Let me show you this first, actually. So here's a reproduction of the cover, um, front and back. Some notes on the uh, correct care and maintenance of tapes, which is kind of important. You have to look after tapes like you have to look after vinyl, but if you do, I believe you can get um, a very, very good long life out of them. And it's, uh, they're, 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 they're my favorite format, simple as that. And then what we have, two individual boxes, uh, each with uh, Analog Productions um, mastering notes, if you like. And we got side A and we got side B. And if we have a look in here, as you can see, I'll carefully open this up. You've got one reel for side A. And one reel for side B. And this is uh, a beautiful, you know, really good high quality reels. And the tape on here is Recording the Masters SM900. And SM900 is Recording the Masters highest spec tape that they make for studio mastering recording. It really is uh, the best they do. It's It's got a very, very, very high head trim, very high saturation point. And um, extremely, extremely quiet and makes phenomenal recordings. Uh, incidentally, Recording the Masters is the same Basically, it's the same tape as I think back in the 60s, you had Agfa. I'm not, I'm not sure of the timing of when these, these companies changed hands, but basically Agfa became BASF. Uh, BASF then became MTech. MTech then became RMG, which I think subsequently was known as RMGI, with an international at the end of it. Um, and then RMGI uh, was bought out by Pyral. And then Pyral introduced the, uh, the, the, the brand name Recording the Masters and, uh, and Recording the Masters again have subsequently been purchased by um, by another company in the last uh, in the last year or so, so the current brand name is Recording the Masters, but its 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 heritage goes all the way back to Agfa, and it's it's reliable tape. It's it's not like um, you don't have to worry about the scare stories of sticky sticky shed that occurred with um, I mean a lot of brands, but mostly Ampex is is sort of the prime uh, culprit there. But anyway, amazing tape. <clears throat> And an amazing product, frankly. Now, how does it sound? Well, I've had this, let me take it out for color. I've had this since um, probably about 1982 or three, something like that. And this is, as well, as you can see, it's nothing special. It's a um, Verve Jazz Masters uh special price so it's a, it's, it's a budget label um it's a budget division of, of or a budget brand um, uh subdivision of the verve label so it is on verve and uh, i'm not sure when this came out but i think this is a late 70s reissue and um but testament to the original recording it sounds absolutely amazing and for that reason uh it's you know it's probably one of my longest owned jazz records i had this before before sketches of spain before kind of blue before time out it really is is one of the one of the first jazz records that i got into and it still sounds amazingly good i mean right to this day i, I played it uh played it just yesterday when i was doing the um the listening for this and still the piano is it's, it's so vivid it's got a beautiful kind of warm golden valve-like kind of glow to it. The bass, as, as I, I, I um, 
mentioned earlier is just exceptionally well recorded and, and the, the, the drums are soft and shuffly the whole thing just flows and is, is incredibly beautiful to listen to now you might be thinking well if that record sounds so good why on earth have you just spent 450 dollars on the tape well let me tell you about that yes the record sounds amazing when, they, when I heard that uh, Analog Productions were releasing this in their master tape, well, ultra tape series, you know, clearly it's a very accessible, popular, very, very popular album that's going to get a lot of listening. So, you know, in that respect, good value. But because it sounds good, you just want to know how much better it can sound. And, and of course, I, I, I love and know tape well, and, and therefore my expectations were high. And um, let me just check my notes because I, I, I just made some sort of bullet point notes about how it sounds and um there we go so i mean the first thing you put the tape on and the, the just um the increased levels of immediacy and clarity to the sound are, 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 are profound it, it, it's immediately obvious um the dynamic kind of reality of the piano um it's just every 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 hammer blow on on every string is just vivid um and uh, i mean the, the, i mentioned about peterson's playing how he can make this sort of complex sound so lyrical and, and flowing and musical and, and accessible um I mean that that again that becomes more and more apparent. I mean it's it, it's I, I, it's ironic the name of the, the label Verve, but it is it just has more verve. It has more vitality, um, more vivacious color and, and passion to the sound. And you've got so on the sound stage you've got Oscar Peterson center stage. You've got um, sorry Ray Brown on the right on bass and Ed Thickpen on uh, drums on the uh, on the left it's it's just the reality of those three performers um, I would say sitting but obviously the bass player standing up um, but the, the, the three performers in front of you it's just intensely real and um, you know the piano as i said it, it, it it's just more vivacious more vivid more more tactile the drums um i think dr the drums possibly improve the quality of the drums possibly improve more than the rest um because it's it's not you know it's not a rock album they're not bashing away um they're not bashing away at the drums and thumping the hell out of them it's very, very sort of soft and, and sensitive and, and sort of shuffly, if you like. But even with that, it's it's you get the weight and the depth of the bass drum, for instance, and and, and that not only adds to the um, the body and the realism of the overall whole. It also musically adds to the sort of the, the um, you know, the musical construction, if you like, the architecture of the music and uh, just makes it even more believable and real. And then the bass, which I've, I've, I've mentioned before. Um, and, you know, I know this is an Oscar Peterson trio album, but <laughs> you could buy this, um, you could buy this album purely for the bass. It's, 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 it's staggeringly well recorded and just the mind-blowing focus on the bass the tightness and, and tunefulness of the sound and, and, and the you know rhythmically compelling playing it, it absolutely lifts you up and, and, and pulls you up pulls you along with this with the music um if there's one word i would use to describe this album and the, the overall feeling it gives you is it's it's joyous there was ever a joyous album it's this it is just it's fun and it's it's light um it's palatable it's easily digestible it's it's just you know it, it is absolutely wonderful and for that reason i think it'll probably be one of my most played master tape copies and uh 
it's you know the sound is astonishing and it's it's not really like listening to hi-fi you've 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 paid your 450 dollars which is you know a fair old chunk of money but what you get for it is you get you know um i mean you know this is this is substantial stuff each one of these tapes um you know the best part of a hundred dollars each just for the blank tape on the reel you know so it's not expensive not at all in fact in, in terms of cost you know retail cost versus cost of the parts this would be about the cheapest format that you can that, that you can buy music on frankly and um you're buying a, you're not just buying a record you're buying a you know it's like a portal into in, in into the actual recording studio um that you can visit over and over and over again i think it's astonishing value for money and it is absolutely utterly unequivocally recommended so i just say well done to uh Chad Kasem and um, Analog Productions um, for producing this. Well done to George Marino for making such a damn good job of that master. And uh, I think on that note, just I'll say thank you very much to everyone who's uh, watched through to this far in the video. Uh, thank you to everyone who's subscribed, my subscribers count has gone up quite significantly in the last few weeks uh which is great and um i'll put a link down below uh to uh, the page on acoustic sounds where i bought this from and um yeah on that note again thank you very very much and i'll look forward to seeing you in my next video thank you goodbye